Hola, buenos días a todos y bienvenidos. Estamos aquí en, en el Salón Cultural de la Llanoa para hacer promoción de una, de una iniciativa bastante, bastante interesante. Y luego una especial ilusión, porque es una iniciativa bajo el punto de vista de futuro, que es el huerto en casa, eh, o, la, o la agricultura ecológica. Eh, además en un entorno especialmente privilegiado como es este pueblo, con rodeado de huerta y muy bien situado, pues, pues, por ejemplo, a tan solo 14 kilómetros de la costa o de, de cerquita del aeropuerto, de la autovía que va desde Alicante hasta Cartagena, en un sitio, como digo, privilegiado, alejado de, de, de un gran ruido. Esta iniciativa creo que es bastante interesante, es un, como digo, tal vez una iniciativa de futuro y que nos va a ayudar a, a vivir, a mejorar incluso nuestra, nuestra calidad de vida. En nuestro municipio hemos conseguido, tenemos un buen número de, de, de habitantes de otras nacionalidades, casi un 30% de otras nacionalidades, y hemos conseguido una bastante buena integración por parte de las otras comunidades, tanto la española, la nacional, como la de otros países. Todos unos y otros estamos participando de, de tradiciones, tanto nacionales como de otros países, esto hace que, que la convivencia en nuestro pueblo sea bastante buena y que la, la calidad de vida sea bastante buena en nuestro municipio. Todo este tipo de, de actividades sobre, o el entorno hace que esto tenga una calidad de vida bastante grande. Si a esto añadimos eh, este nuevo, esta nueva iniciativa que hemos puesto en casa, creo que vamos a lograr todavía incrementar los amigos. Y sin más vamos a dar paso a Mariló Antón, que os va a explicar un poco qué, de qué se trata la iniciativa esta de puesto en casa. Muchas gracias. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our event, uh, Growing an Organic Orchard at Home, organized by Energy Homes and Services, together with the Town Hall of Dianueva, and presented to you by Marilo Anton, Bachelor in Environmental Science, and also the person responsible in the environmental program in Elche, uh, Educational Environmental Program in Elche, of the organic, Urban Organic Orchard in the Cuerna. Today, our purpose is to introduce to you the basic concepts of how to grow an organic garden at home. A little bit about the advantages of having an organic garden at home. First of all, it's uh, good to point out that we live in an environment that is surrounded by concrete and noise with little space for green areas. Having an organic garden at home will give you that uh, reconnection with nature. Please. And um, besides that, it's an eco-friendly hobby. By planting, you help, even if it's in a small scale, the environment by producing oxygen and you know, fighting pollution. Besides that, it helps you to cultivate patience. You know, we live in a society where we want everything immediately. Uh, it doesn't work like this with the garden, you have to be patient, and this will help you cultivate patience. Also, it helps you to leave your troubles behind. Uh, once you're taking care of your garden, it's another way to disconnect from all the stress of everyday life. Besides that, uh, in return, it will give you healthy food. Since you're planting organically, the food you eat will be healthy. In short, it improves your quality of life. planting in a field and planting in a pot or container. Uh, first of all, when you are planting in pots and containers, the space is already reduced, which means the quantity of nutrients and water are limited to that space. Besides that, there is a misbalance between the aerial and the subterranean part of the plant. Uh, if the roots cannot grow further, the plant will stop growing as well. And also, a thing to consider is that when you have a plant in a container, the change in temperature is different than when you have it in the field. For instance, uh, when it gets cold in a container, the ground will cool much faster, which will damage the plant. And as well, when it heats up, the environment heats up, the plant, the ground will heat up, damaging the roots as well. In the field, this does not happen so drastically. Next is uh, to take a look at the characteristics of the container. The first one, it, it should be light, because remember it's going to be in a terrace, so we cannot overload the, 
the structure of the building. Uh, the next characteristic to take into account is the drainage. You need good drainage to eliminate the excess of water. Uh, one way to, to get this drainage is to place rocks in the bottom of the container. And another thing to, to take into consideration is the volume. Uh, sometimes people think that the, how deep the container is is the best, but uh, it's the thing to consider is actually the volume of the container. As you can see here, uh, different roots and different plants need different uh, depth of the container. Alright, now that we have our containers and we have uh, seen where we want to put these containers in our terrace, we have to fill these containers with substrate. And here is the ideal properties of the substrate. Now here we see a list of types of substrate in the, in the market. For beginners, uh, my loan suggests a common substrate which has already the mix that you need and the balance that you need in the substrate. But of course you can make your own substrate, but always keep in mind uh, that balance. For instance, you can use the garden compost together with the uh, perlita or arlita, which are little rocks, or also use the corks from wines, from wine bottles, and you chop them in little pieces. And this this material, the cork, is a very good uh, material for holding water and uh, nutrients. Depending on the time of the year you will be able to plant certain species or other. Uh, here is a small chart, but however, you have to check on your local area what, uh, what kind of crops you can grow at what time of the year. We live in a location where it is very good for, for planting, and um, there is lots of information in the, in the internet as well. Well, besides uh, vegetables and fruits, you can also put decorative or aromatic plants in your garden. And uh, you can grow basically all types of decorative plants. However, my law suggests to grow native plants from this area, which are such as uh, romero, thyme, lemon verbena, mint, salvia, peppermint, lavender, melissa, uh, manzanilla, and oregano. And now we're going to talk about crop association, compatibility, and rotation. And these are all linked subjects. Uh, this comes from experience of farmers from, from history, uh, that they have noticed that a certain family of plants work together better than others or alone. Here is a chart uh, dividing the different crops into families, which you have in your handout that you can see later on. And basically what it does this association and compatibility is to make the best use of your soil. Uh, well, here we can see an example of this association, which is cucumbers and lettuce. And uh, you may see plants as very, you know, still outside in the, of the soil. But if you put two plants that are not compatible, underneath there, there will be competing for the nutrients and all this. And this will uh, make one plant try to stop the other plant from taking these nutrients. Another benefit of, of knowing which plants are compatible or which crops are compatible with others, it's uh, they, ben they benefit each other. For instance, in the example of carrots and onions, the onions attract certain plagues that would otherwise, I mean, repel certain plague that otherwise would attack the carrot. All right, now we'll talk about the plant rotation. And basically, the idea of the rotation of plants is uh, consists in not planting the same family of crops in a row uh, to well to take care of, of the nutrients of the soil. Basically, um, you interchange the needs of of the crops and the soil nutrients. Also, help 
allows us um, to prevent plates, for instance, in the rotation. Once you move certain crop to another pot, there are certain plates that won't be able to follow that crop to the other pot because although it might seem a small space for us, for um, this type of insects and stuff, it, it's, it's a huge space. So it will die before reaching the next pot. Growing organic crops, it's better to prevent other than uh, to, be, to be sorry. And basically what you don't want to do is use chemicals to, once you see the plague, you, have, you want to prevent the plague. <coughs> uh, for this, there are several ways you can do. And it may seem hard, but it's actually easy. You can use home remedies, uh, extracts of plants, like we talked before with the lint. Uh, basically an extract is an infusion of, of the plant, or if you leave the plant in water for a few weeks, and with this, uh, you drain it, and this you spray on the plant. Um, also, another reason why you should not use chemicals is because a lot of the insects, or some of the insects that come to your plants, they don't come to actually eat your plant, but they come to eat some of the plates in your plant, which is the case with the <coughs> ladybugs and the green flies. The ladybugs love green flies, they, they eat them alive. And, um, well, a story about the uh, ants, for instance, sometimes you you see a symptom of a plague, and this could be ants, for instance. The ants are a good symptom that you have green flies in your crops. And this is because ants are, are farmers, and they, they care for these green flies, and they protect them. The reason why is the green fly it has a, well, extracts a substance that the, later the ants will will consume. There's also authorized uh, products for organic planting, such as sulfur. And uh, also here we see a list of, of frequently, uh, of the most frequent plagues in this area. And this is the green fly, the white fly, and the red spider. All right, now we're going to talk about orchard duties. Um, the most important of them is observation. Uh, it is uh, also good to, um, to create a monitoring notebook to keep a track of your, of your garden. And also you should consider removing the, the weeds, although they are not the bad plants, they are not the, the ones you want in your orchard. Uh, you have to consider the pollination. Are your plants getting pollinated? Uh, also, the maintenance of the substrate, and this is done before planting and after planting. You may see that a uh, certain plant needs uh, or is needing uh, nutrients, and you can find a lot of this information in the internet. Uh, you can put, for instance, my, my plant has yellow leaves, and they will tell you and, um, what to do with this, what it needs. And irrigation, again, automatic or manual. The message is basically to, to start, to experiment. Uh, Mary Lowe says she teaches kids of 10 years, 10 year old kids, and it's, it's not hard. You just have to start to experiment, and, and uh, we hope for you to, to do that. Thank you very much. Okay.